Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. I just want to talk about the four Gospels and Islam. The four Gospels and Islam, or the four Gospels and the Quran. The four Gospels and the Quran. Now, Muslims love attacking the Bible. There's uh, Ijaz, a, a Muslim apologist who likes to try before I start my website is jasonbirdspreacher.com get me on Facebook, get me on Twitter and uh, I, I'm doing this for Royal Blood Ministries it's good to be with you, love to everybody this is my last video then I'm going to get on with the day so God bless you and love to everybody and I'm doing this video to show that the Quran is not a reliable historical source now when you do an analysis of the Quran on history concerning the history of Jesus it gives us very little information concerning the times of Jesus, the people of Jesus. Any information that it does has, it borrows from the Bible or pseudo gospels, Gnostic gospels. So the Quran is not really a historical source to tell us about Jesus. Now, Muslim apologists will say that the four gospels were anonymous. So I'd like to read uh, Wednesday, March 31st, 2010, Gospel Inscription on the website uh, Evangel Zomi uh, Blogspot. Evangel Zomi Blogspot. And it's by the scholar uh, Michael F. Bird. So just type in the Gospel Inscription. Michael F. Bird. He's a quite well-known scholar. Uh, I don't agree with everything he says. He's not solidly evangelical, but this is what he says about the gospel inscriptions. When were the gospel inscriptions, e.g. Catamarican, according to Mark, added, received wisdom was that they were added during the collection and ratified of the four gospel collection in the mid-second century. A. Von Hardick, T. Zan, Theodore Zan. Some would even claim, like Rudolf Pest, that all the inscriptions and subscriptions of the Gospel manuscripts are late. Um, however, this view was strongly contested by the late scholar Martin Hengel, who argued that there is no evidence that shorter readings like Catamatum found in Codex Vaticanus were more primitive than the longer readings like Euvangelion Catamarcan, since the early papyri all attest the longer reading. The title Evangelion Catamarcan cannot be attributed to the fixing of the 4 4 Gospel canon in middle to late 2nd century in order to differentiate the Gospel from each other because Aristides Apol 2, in his book Apol 2.16 and Justin Apol 16.3 both know that Evangelion Gospel in the plural and in the case of Justin there is an awareness that the Gospels derived from the Apostles and their followers in the book Dial 103.8. Marcion's, Marcion's preference for Luke in 144 CE was perhaps based on his agreement with his title, a tradition that had already attributed to a disciple of Paul as opposed to the Judaizing Gospels of Matthew and John. The statement for the statement attributed to Papias about the origins of the Gospel assumes a titular distinction between the Gospels. Furthermore, if Papias got his information from John the Elder around 90 to 100, then John Mark Peter, like found in Papias' statement, cannot have been derived from 1 Peter 5.13, since 1 Peter was pseudographically written during this same period at the time of the Domitian in the, in the 90s. The titles of the non Canonical Gospels, some of which can be dated to the mid-2nd uh, century, Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Peter, Gospel of Ebonites, are to be understood as deliberate imitations of the titles of the Canonical Gospels. Likewise, Basilides of the Alexandrian Gnostic in the early 2nd century wrote a 24-volume Gospel commentary that perhaps included the title of distinction between the Gospels as well. The longer ending of Mark in 6 and the Epistula Apostolorum, dated to the first half of the second century, presupposes the circulation of the Gospels and Acts. 
While the Gospels are strictly anonymous at the literary level, that was possible only because their authorship and origin would have been known in its immediate setting. Anonymous works were rare in antiquity and regarded with suspicion, hence the rise of pseudography. Tertullian in, Adv in ADV Mark 423 went so far as to say that the Gospel not bearing the name of its author was not to be received because he knew of some gospel that had titles, canonical gospels and perhaps others and those that did not, Martian, yet the titles were probably added to the gospel very early on in order to identify the origin of the work when the gospels were used in liturg liturg liturgical practice. Uh, disseminated further afield or arranged in Christian libraries, if the gospels were utterly anonymous on, and circulated with no knowledge of their origin, then this would have led to multiplicity of titles that we do not find at all. Thus the titles were not added at the final redaction of the fourth gospel collection in the middle of the second century, but were probably given during the dissemination of the gospels to other communities when Christian scribes added the name based on collective knowledge and their authorship and origins. Now that's a scholarly uh, rendition of why the titles of the Gospels are there and that the Gospels were not anonymous. So a lot of uh, scholarly information there. Gospel inscriptions by Michael F. Bird. But I had to read that because there are Muslim scholars today, Muslim apologies, saying that the Gospels were anonymous. And basically, Martin Hengel has shown, one of the greatest scholars of all time on this topic, that early on the Gospel titles were there. So we've given some information to think about. It's technical information, so you'll have to go to uh, type Google Gospel Inscriptions Michael F. Bird and get that technical information and think about it. Now, I want to talk about the dates of the four Gospels. When were the Gospels written? Uh, you can have a look at... You can have a look at uh, Pastor Bob Ron Jones, Pastor Ron Jones, the Titus Institute, 2010, the dates of the four Gospels. Basically, he makes a powerful argument. Uh, this is his conclusion. His conclusion, the historical literary evidence can establish the general time periods of the publishing of the Gospels, but it's not really that important. The authors of the Gospels are what was important to the early church and what is important to present day Christians. The four New Testament Gospels were collected by the church in the first century because they were written by the Apostles Matthew, Mark, Matthew John and Mark, the close associates of the Apostle Peter and by Luke, a close associate of the Apostle Paul. No other Gospel was collected because no other gospel, Apostle or close associate of Apostle wrote a Gospel. All of the Gospels came in the second century and were too late to have been written by an Apostle or a close Apostle of an Apostle, thus were never accepted in the, as the, by the early Church Fathers. And in this article, The Dates of the Four Gospels, Pastor Ron Jones, the Titus Institute, it gives a lot of, a lot of uh, historical information to show you the dates of the Gospels, that they're in the first century, early in the first century. The next uh, article that I want you to go and have a read is is uh, why did the early church accept only four gospels as authoritative? Uh, Ron Jones, Pastor Ron Jones, the Titus Institute, two thousand and ten. He says the historical literary evidence demonstrates that the early church, the early followers of Jesus, accepted the four New Testament Gospels because they were written by apostles uh, so, or associates of apostles and were in agreement with apostolic teaching. The apostles were the only authoritative eyewitnesses of Jesus. Only the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, fitted their criteria. Jesus appointed them and gave them authority to perform miracles. So Matthew and Mark Luke record in the Gospels that Jesus appointed 12 apostles 
and gave them authority as his witness to proclaim his true identity and mission in the world. Mark 13, 3, 13, 19 And he went up to a mountain and called to him, and he wanted whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve who he named apostles, that they should be with him, that he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. And he appointed twelve, Simon, who was surnamed Peter, James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, whom he surnamed uh, Bonages, which is the son of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, John, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, Canaanite, Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. You can read Matthew 10, 1, 8. You can read Luke 6, 12. And now Jesus made the apostles eyewitnesses to the resurrection. In Luke 24, 36, 43, and as they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they were seeing a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do, you, why do doubts rise in your hearts? Behold my hands, my feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bone, as you are, see I have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they did not yet believe it, became, it because of joy and wondering, he said to them, Have you any food here? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them so the Lord chose the Apostles he appeared to the Apostles and he gave them authority and they were eyewitnesses so so Clement in 95 says the Apostles have preached the gospel to us from the Lord Jesus Christ Christ, Jesus Christ has done so from God. Christ therefore was sent from God and the apostles by Christ. 1 Clement 42. Ignatius 105. Study therefore to be established in the doctrines of the Lord and the apostles. In Magnesia 13. Polycarp 117. Let us then serve him in fear with all reverence, even as he himself has commanded us, and as the apostles who preached the gospel to us, and the prophets who proclaimed beforehand the coming of the Lord. Philippians 6. Polycarp. Irenaeus 180. For the Lord of all gave us to us the apostles, the power of the gospel, through whom also we have known the truth, that is the doctrine of the Son of God, of God against the heresies, three pre prefaced. And you could go on and on and on. Tertullian, 1207, since the Lord Jesus Christ sent the apostles to preach or rule, that no others ought to be received as preachers than those whom Christ appointed. For no man knows the Father except the Son, and to whoever the Son will reveal him. Nor does the Son seem to have revealed him to any other than the apostles whom he sent forth to preach prescription against heresies. So, the four Gospels are built on apostolic witness. And what that means is, so you can read uh, Ron Jones, the Titus Institute, why did the early church accept only the four Gospels as authority? Uh, so, the four Gospels had an apostolic witness, the apostolic teaching. They were, the apostles were appointed by Jesus. They were given authority. They were eyewitnesses. And so therefore the four Gospels are rooted in that eyewitness material. The Quran has no authority because Jesus did not give the, the Quran any apostleship. It said of Muhammad that he was an apostle, but he, he was a false apostle because he never saw Jesus die and rise again. Now, the other thing about the Quran is the historical reliability. The Gospels are way, way full of historical reliable information, whereas the Quran is not got any real historical information about Jesus, only that it's borrowed from the Gospels or from pseudo-Gospels, Gnostic Gospels. So we have historical reliability. So you can look at this, uh, Patrick, historical reliability of the Gospels. Uh, it's uh, historical reliability of the Gospels, Patrick Zuccarell. And uh, this is an article on the 
He goes, the internal evidence for the Gospels. The internal evidence presents a strong case for the first century date for several reasons. The Gospel of Matthew, Mark and Luke present Jesus' prophecy regarding the fall of Jerusalem temple. Matthew 24, Matthew 13, Luke 21, which occurred in 70 AD. However, the Gospels do not record the fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy. It is strange that the Gospel writers would not record this major event in Jewish history in their writings. The temple was the focal point of the Jewish religion, the place where God dwelt, and the only place the sacrifice of sin could be performed. Not according to this major event is like a historian writing on the history. Not recording this major event is like a historian writing on the history of New York City and never mentioning the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. The external evidence also presents a good case. The New Testament scholars have an enormous amount of ancient manuscripts, evidence total over 5,000 documents. An important document is the Chester Beta Papyri dated 250 AD, which contains most of the New Testament writings, including most of the book of John. We can safely conclude the original books of the New Testament were completed much earlier since there needed to be sufficient time to write, copy, collect the books of the New Testament. Another important manuscript is the Bodo Papyri. This manuscript contains most of the books of John and is dated to have been written 200 AD. Third, we have the Rylands Papyri that was found in Egypt and contains a fragment of John dated 120. From this fragment we conclude that the Gospel was completed before 120 AD because not only did the Gospel happen to be written, it has to be handed, copied and make its way down the, from Asia Minor to Egypt since Matthew, Mark and Luke precede John we can support the first century dates. Another line of evidence is found in the writings of the Church Fathers, Clement, Rome, whose writing date 95 AD quotes from three of the Gospels and other portions of the New Testament. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, writes a letter before his martyrdom in Roman 115, quoting from four Gospels and other New Testament letters. Polycarp wrote to the Philippians 120 and especially mentioned the Gospels and New Testament writers. Archaeology of the Gospels. Among the Gospel writers, Luke is found to be a very accurate historian. He names 30, 32 countries, 44, 54 cities, 9 islands without error. Modern mariners have confirmed the accuracy of the detail according to Paul's final journey from Palestine to Italy. Luke used titles of government officials, proconsuls and tetrarchs. While some are unique, they are found to be accurate. For example, in Luke's announcement of Jesus' public ministry in Luke 3.1, he mentions Lysanias, tetrarch of Albany. Scholars questioned Luke's credibility, since the only Licinius known for centuries was a ruler uh, of Chalice who ruled in from 40-36 BC. However, an inscription dated on the time of Tiberius, who ruled from 114 to 14 to 37 AD, was found recording a temple dedication which names Licinius as the Tetrarch of Albany near Damascus. In Acts 28-7, Luke is uh, Polybius, the chief man on the island of Malta, the title first man of the island. Scholars questioned this unusual title and deed it, deemed it unhistorical. Inscriptions have recently been discovered on the island that need indeed give uh, Polybius the title of first man. Historian Sir William Ramsey was once a skeptic who travelled to the Middle East to verify the accuracy of Luke's work. He seriously questioned Luke's credibility, but after re years of research, he concluded. Luke is a historian of first rank. In short, this author should be placed uh, along with the very greatest historians. Luke's tested accuracy gives us confidence in his works. Um, F. F. Bruce, one of the most respected New Testament scholars, writes, A man whose accuracy can be demonstrated in matters we are able to test, where we are able to test, is likely to be accurate when where the means for testing him are not available. Accuracy is a habit of mind, and we know from Happy experience that some people are habitually accurate just as others can be dependent depended on up to to be inaccurate. Luke's record entitles him to be regarded as a writer of habitual accuracy. Numerous archaeological discoveries confirm the events according in the Gospels in John 5 1 15, Jesus heals a man at the pool of Bethesda. John describes the pool as having five porticos. The existence of the pool was disputed until recently, when the pool of Bethesda was discovered in the northeast quarter of the old town Jerusalem, 40 feet underground. 
Archaeology has covered the pool with five porticos and the description of the surrounding area matches John's layout in John 9-7. Mentioned another long disputed site, the Pool de Siloum. However, this pool was also discovered in 1880, upholding the accuracy of John. Uh, Pontius Pilate is mentioned in all the Gospels, evidence that he was the governor of Jesus' trial and the description of his character is described in the Gospels as being affirmed. In 1961, Italian archaeologist Antonio Frovo uncovered a fragment of plaque that was used as a section of steps leading to the Caesarea Theatre. The inscription, written in Latin, contained the phrase Pontius Pilate, Prefect of Didia, as dedicated to the people of Caesarea, a temple in honour of Tiberius. This temple is dedicated to the Emperor Tiberius, who reigned from 14 to 37 AD. The new findings accurate chronology with the New Testament, which recalls that Pilate ruled as procreator from 26 to 36 AD. So that's the historical reliability of the Gospels. Uh, new Testament Gospels as biography. Uh, if you read Burridge, uh, you can read R. Jones, the Titus Institute, New Testament Gospels as biography shows uh, what Richard Burridge, Dean of King's College, London, agrees when he states, traditionally the Gospels, this is Richard Burridge, Dean of King's College, London, agrees, he says, traditionally the Gospels were viewed as biographies of Jesus. Thus they were used as windows onto Jesus, written for those who wanted to know about him. Even the, with the development of literary and historical studies, the quest for the historical Jesus still used the Gospels as a basis to discover information about Jesus' life, teaching and death. During the 19th century, biographies began to explain the character of a great person by considering his or her upbringing, formative years, school psychological development and so on. The Gospels began to look unlike such biographies. During the 1920s, scholars like Carl Ludwig Schmidt, Rudolf Bultmann rejected any notion that the Gospels were biographies. The Gospels appear to have no interest in Jesus' human personality, appearance of character, nor do they tell us anything about the rest of his life other than his brief public ministry and extended concentration on his death. Instead, the Gospels were seen as popular folk literature, literature collections of stories handed down orally over time. Far from being biographies of Jesus, the Gospels were unique forms of literature, so generous, and this approach dominated the studies of the gospel for the next half century. In recent years, many genres have been proposed of the gospel, but increasingly they have been again seen as biography. The work of Charles Talbot and David Oon has contributed greatly to this development, while my own work has attempted to give a, a, a detailed argument combining literary theory and classical studies with gospel scholarship. So the Gospels are beginning to be seen as historical biography now. So, so let's just recap what we've done. We looked at inscriptions. We showed that early on the Gospels were not anonymous. Uh, this book came 600 years after Jesus. It was not in the first century of the time of Jesus. So it cannot tell us any detailed historical information about who Jesus was. Yet the Gospels are clearly first century literature. And not only that, they are based on eyewitnesses and they're based on apostolic witness that shows us that the Gospels are reliable about who Jesus is. Secondly, we looked at the um, historical reliability of the Gospels based on Luke being faithful, John being accurate in his information, and the four Gospels getting information like Pontius Pilate as a historical figure. Whereas these Gospels, the, this Quran, uh, has very little information about any people like Pontius Pilate or anybody of detail within the first century. So it's not really a book that we can rely on historically about Jesus. And thirdly, we've looked at new scholarship that shows that the Gospels are based on biography, historical biography. This book is not in any way, the Quran, based on biography or history. So it's irrelevant to the life of Jesus. So we need to read the four Gospels if we want to know about Jesus. And we mustn't listen to the Quran 
concerning Jesus. It is not an accurate book in any shape or form when it comes to the life and times of Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening.